Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name's Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If y'all are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that all of my groups and links are posted in the description below in case y'all want to check those out. In today's tutorial, we're going to cover everything you see posted here. I love how this tumbler turned out. This tumbler was created with November's flock box colors and one of the pattern vinyl sheets included. If you guys have not purchased one of my flock boxes, each month I release a mystery box that includes four new glitter colors and two new pattern vinyl that coordinate with each other so you can make two awesome tumblers right out of the box. I think my favorite part about this tumbler is the painted birch trees, which I am going to show you guys how to do. I just love how simple they are to create, but it still produces a beautiful result. Even if you are not what you would consider a painting artist, it is still super simple and anybody can do it. In my tutorials, I try to go over everything, but if you guys have any questions about materials, products, or a technique that I did, please just ask in the comments or in one of my groups and I will come back and answer them. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial and I hope you guys enjoy. If y'all didn't know, I will be teaching a two-day class next year at TumblrCon. I'm so excited to meet you guys in person. If you want details on the convention and a discount code, be sure to check out the link in the description. Okay, y'all, so before we get started on our tumbler, we're going to remove the bottoms. If you don't use the Steel Magnolia tumblers, this is definitely a feature I like about their tumblers. You can easily pop off the bottom cap. It is just a cover. This is not going to affect the integrity of the tumbler. I just use my metal putty knife. I just hammer it down between the cap and the tumbler. I usually hold it between my lap so that I can get a good grip on it so it doesn't shake all over the table. But once you get that putty knife wedged in between the cracks, you can easily just lift that putty knife and the bottom cap just pops right off. I'm just showing you guys how to do a couple of these to just show you guys how easy it is really. And once the bottom cap is popped off, you can do loads of fun things. If you guys watch my channel, y'all will see me do glitter buds. I have done shaker bottoms. You can bling the bottom of it. It's just a fun little surprise that um, your customers may not be expecting. Most of the time we just kind of forget about the bottom of our cup, but this just gives us a way to be even more creative. So once you have the bottoms popped off, we're just going to take it outside and spray paint it. I always base coat my tumblers with a flat white paint and primer. And once that spray paint is dry, we're going to go ahead and cut our vinyl. I just measured my vinyl to the width I wanted. I just did halfway around the tumbler. And now we're going to get this awesome tool from Cami Page Boutique. If y'all don't know Brooke, she is awesome. These tools are amazing. We have a discount code for her tools. This helps you create a straight line down your tumbler. That way, when you apply your vinyl, you know for sure it's going to be straight because we already made a straight line on our cup. So we're just going to line up this vinyl right along that straight line that we already made. Smooth it down. And once that is smoothed down, we are just going to carefully smooth out the rest of the vinyl. We wanna make sure that there are no air bubbles. So just go slowly. This is sped up a little bit, but I am a little bit more careful making sure that there's no bubbles. And 
and I am just smoothing it down to the edge, making sure there are no wrinkles or creases. And now I'm going to get this edging tool, which I love also from Brooke. Again, her site and our discount code will be linked in my description. We're just going to trim the top edge of this vinyl and it gives us that nice clean edge we want. And for the bottom, I am going to go ahead and wrap the bottom edge with the vinyl this time. So I'm just going to trim about a half inch sections, maybe a quarter inch. I don't really measure, I just cut different sections. So that way I can pull that vinyl over the edge and push it down into that first cavity. So that way we get a smooth edge. We don't get very many creases. You may have one or two, but most of the time, once you epoxy, those little creases are going to be disguised. So once I fold that vinyl over, I just take one of my tools and just smooth that vinyl down into the cavity. make sure that the vinyl is sticking to the sides. Usually whatever I can find, tweezers, little tools, anything. And once we have that vinyl on, we're going to be ready to glitter. So I'm going to take my painter's tape and we're going to tape off the vinyl. That way we can apply our glitter glue or whatever you're using to apply your glitter over this tape it's not going to get on the vinyl and we're going to get a nice clean line. I'm going to be using Artistry's glitter glue. It is one of my favorite ways to apply glitter. Again, we do have a discount code for Artistry Epoxy in the description. And these are our awesome glitter colors we're going to be using. These were all in November's flock box, along with the sheet of vinyl that we used and a plaid vinyl sheet that is not in this video. And I just loved these pinky peach coral colors together. I thought that they ombre very well together and when I was choosing these colors, I already had this idea in my mind that I wanted a winter um, sunset scene. I just thought these colors were perfect for that kind of pinky Christmas morning. So I am just going to apply glitter glue all over this tumbler. And when you apply glitter glue, you want a decent coat, especially since we're going to be doing an ombre. And I always compare glitter glue to the epoxy method. It's very, very similar, but it dries quicker. Um, the glitter glue is not like Mod Podge, even though it is a glue, glitter glue tends to level out and you don't get any streaks or anything like that. It takes a little bit longer to dry than Mod Podge, so you get great coverage. And I am just starting with my snowflakes up top, kind of making it look like the snow is falling down. And then we're just going to take a few random snowflakes and kind of sprinkle them down the tumbler. And since we are sprinkling the snowflakes first, whatever glitter we sprinkle on top is not going to cover the snowflakes because there's not going to be glitter glue on top of the snowflakes. So they will still kind of appear like they are on top of all of the other colors. So now we're going to go in with our lightest of the three colors, which is Jingle Juice. This is a really pretty light coral color. It's like a pinky coral, it's very light. And I'm using my tea strainer. If you guys watch my tutorials, y'all know that most of the time I do ombres, I always use a tea strainer because it just helps so much with that color blend. And I am sprinkling it into the snowflakes and then I'm sprinkling it down into the white part of the tumbler. 
Now we're going to use the next color, which is Sugar Plum, and that is a darker pinky coral. It's very similar to Jingle Juice. It's just a darker tone, and we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to sprinkle it a little bit into the original pinky color, which is Jingle Juice, and then we're going to sprinkle it a little bit down into the white part. Then we're going to go in with our last color, which is Pink Peppermint. And we're going to cover the entire bottom rim. And then we're going to work on our blend a little bit. So we're going to sprinkle this in to the second color, Sugar Plum. And then we're also going to take Jingle Juice. I am just filling in some of those spaces that need a little bit more blending. And this is why I like glitter glue opposed to regular adhesives because that glitter glue will soak up that glitter and the top layer will still be a little bit tacky just like the epoxy method. So if you cannot use epoxy or you don't want to use epoxy to apply your glitter, this is a great alternative. I always have an extra bottle on hand because I never want to run out. And you can just kind of work on your blend until you're happy with how the colors look. Already, I was loving how this tumbler was turning out. I just thought these colors were so pretty together. And now we're going to go ahead and remove the tape. You do want to remove the tape when the glue is still wet. We don't want any clumps of glitter peeling up because it dried to the tape. And since we're using a chunky snowflake glitter, you may have to kind of shift some of the snowflakes around if the tape kind of pulled some off. And then we're going to let this dry. I am going to spray seal it with Rust-Oleum two times. And once that is dry, we are going to take it outside and epoxy it. I am just showing you guys how I epoxy two cups because I get asked all the time if I can just show how I epoxy. So if this helps anybody, this is how I epoxy my tumblers. My favorite epoxy to use is Artistry's one to one facet. I have used several different epoxies and Artistry is my favorite. I get a great finish, very minimal bubbles. I know that working with a new epoxy can be tricky at times. So some tips I have for Artistry's facet is to make sure your room or workspace has low humidity. And during colder months, I do have my space heater out in my garage. After using Artistry for a few months, I started to notice that some of my cups were a little bit tacky, um, even after they had set overnight. And after troubleshooting a few different things, I realized that I did need a dehumidifier in my workspace. This epoxy definitely likes low humidity. You guys can see to the right of my screen, I have a small little dehumidifier set up in my garage. Uh, this was about $20 off Amazon and it instantly fixed the issues that I was having with my cups. As soon as I set up this dehumidifier and had it running for one day, my cups have been flawless ever since. So if you guys have been struggling with um, problems with artistry epoxy or any other epoxy, definitely try a dehumidifier because it fixed all of the issues that I was having. So after I get all of my epoxy on my cups, I just kind of smooth everything out, make sure my bottom rims are covered. Then I will wipe my cups from bottom to top just to make sure that everything is covered and that there are no globs of epoxy on there. And then I will take my torch and pop my bubbles for run rotation. This is just to ensure that the entire tumbler has been hit with my torch and I pop as many bubbles as I can.
So I will let this epoxy spin for about an hour. Then I will do one more coat of epoxy. Once that has cured, I will sand my rims. I will sand any glitter bumps that I feel. And then we will be ready to decal and paint our birch trees. So everything has been sanded. I cut out these two deer images. I am only going to use half of them though. I just want kind of half their little bodies on my cup. So they're kind of peeking out of the side like this. But before I put my deer on, I am going to paint my birch trees. So that is what I'm going to show you guys right now. So we are going to take a piece of painter's tape and we're just going to peel it in half. That one was clearly a fail. <laughs> so I am just peeling this piece of tape. I'm just kind of pulling it at angles just so the edge is not perfectly straight. And then I'm just going to place this piece of tape where I want my tree. And then we're going to take the piece that we peeled off and we're going to place it right next to the other piece of tape. So it gives that kind of bendy tree look. And we're going to do the same thing for the other one. And we're going to scoot this one closer. And we're going to do one more in the center. So this is where we want our third tree. And then we're going to take some paint. I am just going to use Pop of Color Paint by CC DIY. If you don't have Pop of Color, any type of paint will work. I'm just using Pop of Color because it is a chalk paint and it dries fairly quickly. So I wanted something that would dry quick since I was doing a tutorial, but if you just have regular white acrylic paint, that is definitely fine as well. So we're just going to paint our tree lines. Make sure you don't paint in between the trees because that is just our blank space. So I'm just painting my trees just plain white right now. And I'm just painting right up to the edge. We don't want to paint that stainless rim that we exposed when we sanded our top rim. And I'm just going to do a second coat. And I do not wait for the second coat to dry before I move on to the next color because I want my colors to kind of blend together with the next step. So we are doing, you know, a fairly thick coat. That way we have some paint to play with when we do our second color, which is going to be wet sand. Wet sand is kind of like a beigey brown color. So if y'all don't have these colors and you're looking for an acrylic comparison, I would just take a light brown, maybe mixed with a little bit of gray and white. And we are just going to take a very small amount on a small paintbrush and we're just going to paint it right along the tape line, only on one side. So this is going to kind of be like a shadow. And we're going to do that for all three trees. And we're just kind of slopping it on right now. We're not too worried about blending it at the moment. So next we're going to take black. Again, if you don't have pop of color, just get some basic black acrylic paint. And we're just doing a very small amount of the black. We don't want the black to overtake the trees. So we're just applying a small amount. And 
And then we're going to go back with our larger paintbrush, the one that we applied the white with, and we're just going to drag those colors down. So this will just blend them together. We're just doing one stroke. And next we're going to get this paintbrush. This one has jagged edges. It's just one that I cut with scissors just so it wasn't all one length. And we're just going to go in and make some black little markings. This is going to represent the exposed bark that is on the birch trees. And again, this was just a paintbrush that I cut. It's not a special brush. It's just a small paintbrush that I just cut with my scissors. And we're just going to make these little black marks. I'm making some on the left side, the right side, some just in the middle. But y'all can see that the birch trees are starting to take shape. And once you're happy with how your little black markings are looking, Again, we're just doing light coats. We don't want the black to overtake the trees. And now we're just going to remove our tape lines. And look how good they look, y'all. See how easy that was to produce these trees? It was super simple. So now we're going to go in and add some small little branches. I am just matching the paint color to whatever color the tree is that I'm going to be painting on. So I'm still using some white, some of this wet sand, and we're just kind of drawing just small little branches kind of out from the tree. So they're just little branches. That's all we're doing. Just small kind of little squiggly lines. And we're just gonna do this for all of our trees. And once we get these three trees finished, we are going to let it dry completely. And then I'm going to go back and apply two more trees in between these other three. So it kind of looks like a little birch tree forest, I guess. So the sunrise colors are still going to be shining through the trees. But yes, so y'all can see how super simple designing these trees were. And once our trees are completely dry, we are ready to apply our little deer decals. I did decide to add some snow at the bottom. I forgot to film that part, but it's really just painting on some white paint and I did this so the deer's feet would kind of blend in with the bottom and wouldn't be just kind of standing on the pink it actually looks like they're standing on snowbanks now and for our little deer I'm just trying to pull him over a little bit to the edge so that when we put the pinstripes the pinstripes are going to cover the deer and there's not going to be a space in between the deer and the vinyl so it's all going to blend together i'm sorry i'm a little bit out of frame but i'm really just kind of sticking these little deer on to the cup so i'm just smoothing them down and once we have our deer on there, I'm going to put this decal. I really didn't know what decal I wanted. On the other side, I am awful at putting decals on cups. But I wanted something that would not be, that wouldn't stand out so much. I wanted it to kind of blend into the cup. But when you looked at it, you were like, oh, there's a decal there kind of thing because I really wanted the vinyl to kind of be what caught your eye. So I thought that this 
kind of pinky orange vinyl with the white font went really well with this cup and all of my vinyl comes from my local vinyl shop which is perfect press htv formerly known as jsi signs they are in norcross georgia they are about 30 minutes from where i live but they have the best prices and a really good selection you can order from them online as well I don't ever know the, the exact colors that I get because in shop they don't really ever have anything labeled. So I just kind of grab whatever is on the shelf. This orange pink I know is some type of opal. I don't know if it would be called a pink opal or an orange opal. I'm really not sure. So right now we're just lining up all of our little decals. When I have lots of little pieces, I like to just put them on one by one. And the white I decided to add after the decal was on my cup because it would be a little hard to get that white lined up with that rectangle perfectly, I thought. But it would be easy just to apply it like a pinstripe. So now we're just going to get our transfer tape and stick it to our decal. And I am just going to line my decal up with the line of our vinyl. Make sure it's spaced pretty evenly. That way I know that my decal is straight. I just had this line there, so I just went with it. That's why I liked lined transfer tape because it comes in handy with lining stuff up to the top of the tumbler. And then we're just going to press it down gently with larger decals. You do need to be careful so nothing bubbles or nothing creases. So once we have our decal on, I am just going to peel up this transfer tape carefully. Sometimes chrome or holographic opal vinyl can kind of be a stickler. So you want to make sure that it doesn't rip up. And now I'm going to go back and put the white on there. If you just want to apply it on one decal, you can definitely do that. This is just my preference for larger decals. I just kind of like to work in sections. So I just took a white pinstripe that I had. And now we're just going to line it up on top of the opal vinyl. And we're just trimming the edges. I'm just connecting them at 90 degree angles. And we're just smoothing it down. And once we get this vinyl on, we are going to apply the pinstripes to the side of the cup. So that way it joins the two sides together. I was really happy with this decal. I was really happy with these trees. I thought it was super cute. So I just decided to use some rose gold holographic vinyl
and we're just folding that vinyl over the edge we're going to do the same thing for the opposite side and this little deer he wasn't quite over as much as I wanted him to be so I just kind of stretched him a little bit more just pulled his little body over just to get him to line up better with that edge so that when we applied that vinyl it was right there trimming it as well and now we're going to go back with white pinstripes if you guys have watched my video y'all know that i cut all my pinstripes in sheets at a time but in case you guys have not seen me do pinstripes I typically cut full sheets of pinstripes out at a time and I usually cut them in size 0 0.07 0 0.05 and 0 0.03 that way I get several different sizes and I can layer them if I need to it always stinks when you have to just cut out two pinstripes so I just like to have many of them on hand so I don't have to worry about cutting them out all the time because I use them so often and we're just lining this white right in the middle of this rose gold and I think it looks awesome I'm really happy with how this was looking and we're going to put this on the turner for epoxy and once our tumbler is completely done that means your sanding is done your final layer of epoxy is done all of that we are going to do our glitter butt and typically for my glitter butts i use about five mils for the smaller exterior cavity and about 10 for the larger interior cavity so i mix up about 15 mils total and just like before we're using artistry's fast set And then I'm going to just mix in the same container since these colors are going to be very close to each other. So I'm just adding the lighter color first. I think this was sugar plum, maybe jingle juice. And we're just going to put this one in the larger cavity. I'm starting with the edges so I know that those are definitely covered. And then we're just going to fill in the middle part. And then I'm going to mix a little of the darker pink in just to add a little bit of a color difference. And we're just going to put this in the exterior cavity. Once this is filled, I'm going to pop it with my torch, pop all the bubbles. And once this layer of epoxy dries, I am then going to go back with a clear layer of epoxy so that the bottom of our tumbler is just as shiny and slick as the rest of our cup. And once that clear layer of epoxy is cured, your cup will be finished. Sorry guys, there's a lot going on in this tutorial. There are teenagers dueling with wooden rods behind my house. Then there are dogs barking, all kinds of stuff. But I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial. Here are some finished pictures. I love how this cup turned out. If you guys got November's flock box or if you want to purchase these colors and try it on your own, please be sure to post your finished pics in any of my groups. I'd love to see what you guys create. And thank y'all for watching and your continued support.
If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group or my mentorship group. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.